So Vision Plus, okay, we gotta, we gotta talk about it. Vision Pro. Vi Vision Plus, oh God. <laughs> so that's the Apple Vision Pro. On this episode, we discuss, should you buy the Apple Vision Pro? D Mallet, how's it going, man? Oh, it's going pretty good. You know, I'm just uh, uh I'm I'm contemplating a decision. I got an email like a week ago, and uh, it's about something pretty expensive to pre-order. Apple sending you email? Um, <laughs> you're, you're yes, that dude. cool. Apple sending you. Hey, bro. Did you really get you, an email from we, Apple asking you to buy this? Absolutely. When you're a part of Deaton oh, Street, Jesus. the most oh, hoppin' Jesus. new podcast we, show we on YouTube. subscribers. So it, we're <laughs> killing it, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate that you're trying to hype really, us up. But I, I really did get an email, though. It was like, oh, pre-order your new Apple Vision oh, Pro, whatever. Pop, pop, uh, pop the email in the edit. I, I actually – that's interesting. Yeah, because yeah. I, I don't – I either didn't get the email or I have them – you just not important. I think enough. I have them spammed. I think Apple is in my spam folder, even though I'm an Apple truther. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of uh, spam it, a lot of big companies that I shouldn't spam, or, or like Marcus junk. You. But I just, I don't like their emails. Yeah, it was one of those emails. I was like, oh god, I want the new headset, but that's like I'm not paying thirty something hundred dollars. Well, that's perfect. That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, should yep. should the normal person? by the $3,500 Apple Vision Pro. And what we mean by normal person is not the tech YouTubers, not the super rich people that are just going to buy it, use it for a day and put it on a shelf. We're talking like everyday blue collar mm -hmm. Americans. Should you buy the Apple Vision Pro? And yes. Okay. That was a good podcast. Yeah. Uh, buy it. See you guys. Thanks for <laughs> See you later. <laughs> no. So uh, last week, uh, about a week ago, once this comes out, Apple released their video that had a walkthrough of the Apple Vision Pro. Mm -hmm. Just really quickly, based on the chapters of that YouTube video, thank you, Apple, for doing chapters. Um, the things that they highlighted was, one, the navigation features, two, photos and panoramas, spatial videos. They showed uh, how you can watch a movie on it. Um, they showed folks doing workspace, FaceTime, and personas, which we're going to talk about a little bit. Um, I have some thoughts there. Oh. Environments. So just kind of changing your environment, environment around you, using it as a Mac display, and mm -hmm. experiences. Off the top, though, I do kind of want to talk about the fact that they've appled it up. And what I mean by appled it up is that they took something that was existing. They didn't add anything mm -hmm. new. There is nothing here in that list of things or anything that I've seen in the Vision Pro that another different VR headset can't do. So there's no capabilities yep. that are just visionary. I think Apple's kind of just trying to do the thing where they do it way better. They take an existing product on the market and they Appleify it and just make it clean, sophisticated, smooth. And hopefully makes it work within this like ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Is that is that your perspective as well, or are there things that I'm missing that Apple can do that an Oculus no. can't do? Uh, th there are a few things, but it's like it's. I'm pretty sure that the Oculus can do, or like some of the bigger uh, headsets, because like the Oculus still is a lower, like consumer grade. VR headset. There are some more expensive ones that are pretty beefy. Um, but the approach that Apple took to their Vision Pro 
is a totally different direction. So like it takes these ideas that were like kind of there mm -hmm. and then like focused on those rather than uh, a lot of the other aspects of the other headsets. Right. So the Apple Vision Pro starts at $3,499. That is the price where I come from. That's the price of your first car. That might be more expensive than your first car where I come from. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. It, that's a that's a big chunk of change. And, and that's for the base model, which has 256 gigs of storage. You can upgrade it to 512 for another $200. And then the one terabyte mm -hmm. model um, is $3,899. After tax, if you buy the one terabyte model, you are paying well over $4,000 for a yep. VR headset. And you want to get Apple Care, all the extra stuff. Oh my stuff, gosh, you know. Apple Care? Apple mm -hmm. Care? That's that's an insurance payment. You, you congrats, yep. you have car insurance for your Apple Vision Pro. You have car insurance for your movie watching. <laughs> right, right. So <laughs> that's the first barrier to entry, right? So when we're talking about this, I I even saw that Apple is offering a financing plan, which they do with all mm -hmm. of their stuff. But the financing plan for this is like three hundred, four hundred dollars like, a month. It's like, it's like two hundred fifty bucks or something. Yeah, two hundred, three hundred bucks. Yeah, that's a lot of that. That that's a commitment. That is a big commitment. Yep. So with that asking price, I am expecting this to radically change one part of my life. I'm either expecting yep. it to radically radically change the way I work every day. I'm gonna radically, or it's gonna change the way that I game, the way that I play video games. Watch movies, which I don't know if I'd ever spend four thousand dollars to change the way that I watch movies. But I guess some people buy like really big, nice TVs. And this is, yeah, I'll I'll spend the money on gas and go to the theater <laughs> or gas and popcorn. <laughs> it's not gonna, yeah, not gonna make the popcorn for you. And then the last yeah. thing is like hanging out, and I think this is the area yeah. where it could, it, it could be a tipping point for me, right? Mm -hmm. Um. If, if I had a group of two or three friends that also had one of these, that could be a tipping point. Yeah. All right. So the first thing that they talked about is navigation. The thing that they're doing differently with navigation that I think sets them apart is they're actually using eye tracking in order to navigate and click on things. So if anyone's ever used a VR, usually like hold a remote and you like point it around and it's pretty mm -hmm. good. It's not great. The eye tracking. The uh, as I say, the Oculus does have like hand tracking and stuff. It has too. hand tracking, right? Which means that you move yeah, your hand. Yeah, it's different. This different. is you actually hand, looking you... at the pupil of your eyes and like which direction it is going, and it's zone zeroing in on something. And you, no. you do this. You you do this to, to click. I know where you're going with this, and I'm very interested to hear your take on eye tracking. <laughs> So I'm a little worried about the eye tracking for me in particular. Now, those of you who don't know me personally probably have watched the podcast and noticed that I can look a little weird at times, right? Uh, this is a fake eye. Cool. Doesn't work. Can't see out of it. It's prosthetic. My big question is, does it require two eyes? You've got to think they've thought of that, right? You, it's absolutely. Apple. It's Apple. It's Apple. It's like, but, but you say that whenever, now this is, this is several years ago. This is like back in high school. I think. We took a trip to Disney, right? We went to Disney World in Florida and they had 3D movies. Disney's got to have the technology. Right. Nope. Yeah. Physically, you are required to have two working eyes to like physically see 3d like that's just how it works this is different from 3d this is using eye tracking so does it does it require two eyes or can it just track from one eye well th will it mess up the calibration I there's don't know. also some 3d aspects to the vision pro mm -hmm. i don't know if that you know I, I don't know enough about the technology to figure out if that's gonna I, work for someone i think 
I think the 3D isn't 3D per se. I think they've put the in the in the trailer or one of the videos I watched. It was like I watched a dinosaur, and you could get up close to the dinosaur. Well, it's in a box, right? It's in a yeah. frame, and it comes out of that frame. So, like, I think they're cheating it per se right. and using the AR capability at the same time. That's just yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, the Oculus has some AR capabilities even the oculus 2 dustin and i both own an oculus 2 have for a yeah. long time um even the oculus 2 has a little bit of ar and that they've in, implemented now the the pass through is terrible it's black and white for the oculus 2 oculus 3 changed the that three right uh, and i'm good. sure we'll talk about that it's, at the end better. when we talk about prices yeah. and capabilities yeah, yeah, yeah. um <laughs> but it, it looked kind of 3d you know hopping around i, yeah. I could i could say it looks kind of 3d so maybe that's the the same that they're doing. I wouldn't know. So I don't know what 3D looks like. So, buddy, <laughs> you tell buddy, me. Yeah, in, in college, <laughs> uh, we went to college together at the same oh. time that 3D movies were all the rage. Every movie was 3D, and uh, we were really excited. One of our other buddies, shout out Matt McMillan, uh, oh, bought the tickets for a movie, and it was 3D. And we got there, and I just it was Iron Man I three. Felt so bad the whole time, man, because I knew. I knew he wasn't enjoying it. He come, he come into work. He's like, got the tickets. And I looked at the ticket. It said 3D. And I said, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> what? What you mean? This is a this is a 3D ticket. Yeah. You spent extra money for me to go watch a normal movie. <laughs> yeah. Because I think it was my birthday it or something. It was, yeah. We went, to, we went was. to Casa Ole. Yeah, because I remember you were kind of salty about the whole thing in Casa Ole, too. It's hilarious. I just, I liked giving Matt a hard oh, yeah. time. Yeah. Love yeah, you, Matt. Yeah. He, he deserves it. He deserves a hard time. Absolutely. Yeah, so do we, though. You know, I think he gave us a hard yeah. time, too. <laughs> yeah. So back to the Apple Apple Vision Pro. So the navigation yeah. features are amazing. It seems like that's a perfect Apple fix to the problem of navigation now, in uh, VR headsets. Navigation. Mm -hmm. We're not meaning Google Maps, Apple Maps. Right. We're talking navigation. like how you navigate actually inside. moving around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, how you move around the menus. <laughs> that that would be wild, stuff. though. <laughs> you driving maps. with the headset on. <laughs> I'm going to get in my Tesla and then just hit it, bump, and then <laughs> I'm, I'm just have my maps up the whole time. Um, so they, they showed photos and, and panoramas. And, you know, the panoramas were cool because, you know, you can take a panorama with your iPhone mm -hmm. and then stretch it around you in, uh, in VR, which looked amazing. Look super cool, but I can't help but think it's a little bit. It, it's just a parlor trick, right? Like, there's no way you mm -hmm. would spend any real amount of time in your life that would warrant thirty four hundred dollars to sit there and look at panoramas. Yeah, uh, like to me, that's like a that's that's it, you want to share that, and you only have one headset. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at the boom. Next person. Oh, look at the Like, no, I want everybody to like stand in the room and look at this panoramic right. mural. Right. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's gimmicky. It's a little gimmicky. Like, oh, yeah, and let's talk about sharing yeah. since you, you uh, brought that up. So mm -hmm. the, let me pull this up. I have it over here. So I have the d display capabilities up here. So the 23 million pixels, 3d display uh, system, micro o OLEDs, um, mm -hmm. I, I believe I, I read somewhere else. It, it's 4K in each eye, which is insane. Mm -hmm. This thing, I, we've not tried it out because we're not connected and we're not rich. Yeah, we're not, we're not that fancy. But 4K in each eye is a massive upgrade over the Oculus. Both all the yep. Oculuses. Um, yep. That is amazing. <laughs> it, it's like it's that's why I kind of say it's like the Appleifying of VR because mm -hmm. that's the way that VR should be that type of, of graphics. Now, where I do kind of get the question, speaking of Apple, is the supported re uh, refresh rates only go up to 100 hertz. I'm fairly yeah. certain that the new Oculuses are 120 hertz, which is kind of typical for gaming. Yep. And well, so you bring that up. I don't think, because you mentioned gaming before, I don't think the Vision Pro is a gaming headset at all. Which, you know has been the case for Apple products for years and years and years. It doesn't ship with controllers. Like there are no controllers. It's all 
eye tracking and 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 na- the navigation system. It's not for gaming huh. whatsoever. Huh. It's for purely mu- movies and productivity uh, and things of that nature. So, interesting point there because a lot of people get VR headsets for gaming. Like say, that's, that's like that's the that's primary the reason that people get VR headsets. That's it. Yeah. So. Do you, do you, you know. think that that is, so I have a lot of questions there. You're probably, you know, mm-hmm. these are just questions for the void. My first question would be, can I yeah. hook up different controllers to it? Can I, can I game? Uh, can I take some Oculus? Probably not. Yeah. Right. Like I usually. highly doubt it. So, cause like, why would they pour that much energy into, uh, the navigation system that they have right. for you to just Use throw some controllers else. on it? So I, I guess my question is, are they ever going to develop controllers or is this just, is the Apple Vision Pro just the new iPhone? You know, is I it, is it just somebody, the beginning of something? I think somebody described it as a new iPad. New iPad. That's not good. So That's not good because I, I kind of, I have an iPad Pro. I think iPads are like the most gimmicky piece of tech out there. Yeah, it's like a big. Phone. I would probably only use an iPad to draw. That's it. Yeah, and that that gets old unless you're an artist. I'm yeah. not an artist. Uh, so, and, and that's like an iPhone. That's ha- that has a use. It goes in your pocket. It makes calls. It functions. An iPad is like it's very use case scenario. Oh, I like to draw. Well, get whatever the drawing app is. I can't remember Procreate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Provision, uh, Vision Pro is. I want to watch these movies in in a theater right. at my house. So let's move on. That's not the only thing that it it's for. Was movies. I'm just saying. Like that's example. So movies. Uh, you know, I think that that's another situation where it's it can get very gimmicky very quick quickly. Um, mm-hmm. I watch movies on my computer screen. I watch movies on my 70 inch TV in my living room i watch movies on you know i watch them on my phone on the phone right right it doesn't change my experience that much with the movies i think that we kind of live in an age now in fact i think we talked about this we may or may not change it the aspect ratio of this episode right here may Mm -hmm. be different we may be changing things to make it look better on phones because that's where we're at people watch Mm -hmm. things on phones yeah i don't know that anyone's really gonna say like i want to watch a movie let me watch it on the Apple Vision Pro, even if you're traveling, because I think for a while it might be a little weird to throw on this huge headset mm-hmm. when you're on a plane. So that kind of leads into the next point. And the, the thing that mm-hmm. I think, so we've, we've said, you know, gaming, it's probably not, it's not going to game. Um, movies, yeah. we think that's probably a gimmick. Um, that leaves two kind of areas in which it could justify itself. One is work. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, as someone who edits video, uh, it would be really cool to have a huge, you know, a screen in front of me so, and a huge timeline at the bottom. And Da Vinci is day one was, too. Whenever they dropped like the first trailer for the Pro, Vision Pro, the one clip in there was. Somebody had their MacBook and you look at it and it then you look up and it throws the screen up, right? Yeah. It's supposed to have this auto thing, right? So then it's an external monitor. Mm-hmm. And they had an editing suite, whether it be Final Cut, Premiere Pro, whichever, but they were editing off of the Vision Pro. I'm sorry, but that's that's impressive. To it me. is impressive, you know. If it works well, if it works well, I you know not to look. I'm a, this this episode may sound like I don't love Apple. I love Apple. I love yes. Apple. Like I I've given them money. I think at one point I bought like a stock. I might still have that Apple stock. Like I love <laughs> Apple. You got to check. I, that. Yeah, 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 I don't know. I may have sold it back. We got to see if we're secretly yeah. rich or you're. <laughs> it was one rich. stock. Uh, it's like worth maybe three hundred bucks. Anyways. <laughs> I love Apple, but Sidecar, which is the way that they are doing the uh, the pass off between a iMac or laptop to usually it's an iPad. In this case, it's going to be the Apple Vision Pro. Sidecar is the mm-hmm. buggiest thing that they've made in my experience, my personal experience. 
cannot get iPad my iPad to stay connected. When it does stay connected, it's buggy. It'll jump out. It, it just, mm. It's just not very intuitive uh, to me. Gotcha. So when I when it popped up on the video and it said, "Oh, we're using our sidecar technology," I was like, "Oh, oh no." Okay. Oh no, <laughs> not your sidecar technology. Oh, I was hoping you thought of new. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what the technical specs behind why sidecar is buggy every now and then. But if it works beautifully every single time and it's fluid yeah. and I can edit on it for long, long stretches of time and the color science is good. Yes. Let me say this again. And the color science is good, Apple. Then. Yes. It makes sense, because how much how much yep. are there are there pro displays? A few thousand dollars. The pro, di yeah, I was gonna say Apple's pro displays are expensive. You so know. are you gonna you know you can, it, it, they're that price, or and you can have multiple monitors. Mm -hmm. You can you can throw up one monitor here. You can throw up one monitor over here. You can throw up one monitor over. I mean, come on. And I believe that you can resize them to what you need. A thirty like to an a extent. thirty two inch Apple thirty uh, Pro Display XDR with Retina six K display is five thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars. So so what I'm telling you here you don't need it, it. What I'm telling you here <laughs> is that if the Apple Vision Pro has good color science and it's actual actually workable to edit on you're mm -hmm. saving yourself fifteen hundred dollars yep i may have just justified it i might need to leave this call and go talk to my wife real quick um <laughs> that might be a good justification do you find yourself craving something sweet cold and made of the softest snow you've ever seen in your life well you're in luck because us here on Deaton Street know of the best place to go. Snowbees Express, located in Jennings, Louisiana, is the number one spot to stop for all of your snow cone, soft serve ice cream, and soda on shaved ice needs. They're open year round because here in Louisiana, we sometimes only get one week of cold winter days per year. So come on down to the Red Train Caboose. Yes, you heard that right, a literal caboose, located in Jennings, Louisiana, 420 Roberts Avenue. Currently, they're open one to five, Monday through Saturday. You can find them on Facebook as well to book a party. Just search Snow Bees Express and reach out. That's S-N-O-B apostrophe S Express. If you really wanted to, you can have it at work or for work on the go, essentially. You're in an airport, you're traveling, or you're in a coffee shop. You'd have your MacBook and... Um, you put on your Vision Pro. You might look a little goofy in public, but that's okay. Right. You're being productive. Uh, you have like a, a multi-monitor setup, portable. Right. You don't have to bring your whole desk where you're going. Um, another thing, if you absolutely wanted to, you could get rid of external monitors on your desk and, and save up some desk room. You can do some more stuff, you know, like... You don't have to have these big monitors if you do the Vision Pro. I think that's kind of huge and not something that I really thought about until you said it. But this the idea mm -hmm. of being able to clear off my desk. I have a massive desk with a massive yeah. setup. So like my actual desk space, it's it's pretty good. But just the idea of just having a, a, a spec'd out MacBook Pro, which also means you're, yep. you're paying way more money. But a spec'd out MacBook Pro connected to the Vision Pro, and then I could just, instead of having a huge setup here, and then my wife has a, a setup um, kind of smaller, mm -hmm. but in our kind of like dining room area, we mm -hmm. could just clear off both of those tables. We just have two tables to sit at, and yep. we have our full setups. Maybe even the setup is saved in the Vision Pro, so it just pops up for, for each user or something like that. Mm -hmm. That would be huge, man. That'd be sweet. Like, that would be... If I knew it worked fluently, right, and like flawlessly, right, like hardly any latency, it it better work like I'm plugging in a monitor at that point. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that would be like a major selling point for me, um, simply because you're like if you want three monitors, like we were saying. You, you would have three virtual monitors. Is that instead of is that worth thirty four ninety nine? Um, if you're if you're looking into getting external monitors, if 
for me and for you, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is a little bit further from like your normal consumer. Mm -hmm. Um, We do a lot of editing, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to get a monitor that's very color accurate. Now, this is assuming that the Vision Pro is very color accurate. A lot of your um, editing monitors for video or for pictures or whatever, uh, your BenQ is a popular one that a lot of people get. Those are expensive. They can get expensive. Yeah. Not the Apple Pro uh, monitor, whatever it is. Well, the professional um, ones expensive. are more expensive than the Apple Pros. Exactly. Yeah. So you're talking so, like I mean, $10,000. Yeah, the, but the, the the consumer level of that you're looking at two to three thousand mm-hmm. on the high end, mm-hmm. and that's a really good one, you know. Um, so I mean, you'd have essentially three of those. I still don't think that we're talking about the the average Joe in this situation. I think yeah. it's very cool. And I, I can see, exactly. especially people as, you know, travel is picking back up. That's, that's amazing. You know, yeah. if you're, uh, you know, someone that has to travel for work a lot and you get to take your full desk setup essentially from hotel yeah. to hotel, that's huge. But I don't think that's the average person. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely your, I'm working in a, in a, in a tall tower of multiple offices, uh, on the 47th floor kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. You're wearing you know, a suit. You're, you're wearing, wearing a suit, suit to work. Yeah. Uh, you, you, yeah. I think the problem is the one piece of feedback that we're seeing from the MKBHDs of the world is that this thing is heavy. And it is very hard to keep it on your head for a long time. I don't know about you, but I edit for two, three, four, five, six hours at a time, especially if I'm on deadline. Uh, I edit until I can't keep my eyes open. (laughs) Right. You know, like I'm falling asleep at my desk. Like that's right. That's what it is. So are you going to be comfortable enough with this huge thing on your head to edit for that long? There's no way. Like the only way that I would be able to do that is if I am leaning back in my chair and I'm looking up. Right. That's it. Like some support, you know, like I got it going. Yeah. And, and then that kind of gets weird with, you know, your computer and your hands and all this. Mm-hmm. I think there's an argument there. I, I'm not poo-pooing this, right? So I, for gaming, it's not a thing. <laughs> for for movies, it's it's a it's a gimmicky thing. For for yeah. work it might be worth it. if it, Depending mm-hmm. on the products you're working on, depending on how much you're bringing in from those things. Again, yeah. we're kind of talking about like, should the common person buy it? And even at work, it's still a no. Right? The common person yeah. isn't going to be editing like that. <clears throat> but there's an argument. No. There's an argument there. Mm-hmm. Last thing, hanging out. So, yeah. it, it, you know, it's a new age. A lot of folks have friends that are online across the country, um, and a yep. lot of a lot of people hang out online. We hang out online all the time. So, yep. is it worth thirty four hundred dollars, thirty five hundred dollars at base level, to be able to hang out and interact with your friends in a way that is closer to reality than anything that we have so far? Now. Closer to reality, you're talking about personas. Show the clip. Hey, Will. It's Kristen. Hey. What, why does your FaceTime look different from Yuri? I'm wearing Apple Vision Pro, just like you. This is my persona. You can see my facial expressions, my hand gestures, and it's all in real time. Huh. Wow. Yeah, do I look the same way? Yeah, your persona's awesome. <laughs> Anyways, I'll let you get back to Alessandra. See you later. All right, take care. Yeah. That is freaky. That is not close to reality. That scared mm-hmm. me. That looks like, what do you say? Black Mirror? Oh. Black Mirror, the series on Netflix. Oh my gosh. That's that's straight out of an episode, was, I, man. It's gotta be. I was be. so excited when I saw this and then like that part popped up because I had been hurt hearing about this. And then I like mm-hmm. sent like a chill. Like someone poured like ice cold water down my spine. Ooh. 
it's like just give me my avatar that i have like on oculus like that's it like i know it's not going to be real we are in a virtual environment so therefore i should have a virtual fake face not this ai looking weird real is oh ugh. it's no, it's, it's uh, that's the stuff you see out of movies right before the apocalypse happens and AI takes over. Like it I did mean, remind me of a movie of a movie of a movie scene. Can, can you can you guess which one? Oh, a movie scene. When I no, say it, it's gonna bug no, you. Uh, the uh, Batman versus Superman, not the Snyder cut, the original one. When Superman comes on and he has the mustache yes, thing, the bad the CG. Mustache. That's exactly what it looked like. Yeah, the person was like, "Yeah, hi, Dustin. It is so nice to see you." This is my virtual <laughs> avatar. This is uh, way better to talk to me like this than uh, uh, seeing... Uh, oh, I forgot to blink. You can see all the expression in my face. Look isn't, at it right now. It's so expressive. Isn't this great? Tim Cook is amazing. <laughs> like, Tim Cook is my savior. What, uh, <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? Leave that out of the video. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it was so <laughs> creepy. Um yeah. It's a no for me, dog. Like it, it's 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 thirty four hundred dollars. It's so expensive. there's nothing here that it screams. I need this. I honestly yeah. think this is this is a proof of concept for Apple. I think that in two or three mm -hmm. years, there's going to be a product that comes out that's the price of an iPhone that doesn't have all of this stuff you don't need. It's going to be practical, and everyone's going to buy it. It's going to be practical, but right now. Well, it's a no. So on that thought, uh, so I might have pre-ordered one. I'm kidding. I didn't pre-order one. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's definitely a no for me. Um, like you can, it, I'm just going to get a, I met a quest three, like it's 500 bucks. You I know? can play video games on it. I can play video games. I can still hang out with my buds. Uh, I, that I don't see. I can do multiple monitors. I can do multiple monitors right now on my Oculus 2. It's crap. Mm -hmm. It hurts my eyes. Yeah. I would rather just yeah, work on my real life monitors, but yeah. I can do it. Yep. Uh, yeah. For the average person. So it's like the, the same thing with the AirPods. Oh. You have your AirPods, AirPod Pro, Ooh. and then you have the Air. AirPod Max or Ooh, whatever. Don't, don't, mm. The AirPod Max. That's gimmicky. Oh, get out of here. Into episode. It's me and Dustin aren't friends anymore. I want one so I want a set of those so bad. Have no, you tried them at the Apple they're Store? Gimmicky. No. Dude, they sound so have. good. They sound so good. And the the noise cancellation actually is really good. If you're traveling, if you're going on like airplanes and stuff. I got my earbuds, man. You're I got my AirPod Pro right here. Boom. Psh. Easy to carry. That's it. Boom. Some people I don't, don't want this big old some people like over, little purse. But I, well, yeah, the purse, the bra purse looks really weird. Ugh. But uh, some people like uh, over the years. Like I have some bows that I uh, mm -hmm. that I love that I've been using for years. Um, just because sometimes. This is the only over the ears that I use mm. are these. Yeah. But I'm going to over the ear because I don't me, like it. Like it, the AirPod Pros, I have some, but they like pierce in my ears sometimes. It's not, it's not good. Well, like my, my point with that though, like, yeah, the AirPod Max or whatever, those are, they sound great, whatever. If you like over the ear headphones, cool. Spend $500. Right. Be a part of the 1%, you know, or spend a little bit less, get some more portable AirPods, whatever. Same thing with your Mac products, right? You got your MacBooks, your Mac Studio, right? You can spend some good money. Or if you really want to, just go get a a, a Mac tower, right? The cheese grater mm -hmm. uh, for like, I don't know, you can start out at 25K right. and then build it up to like 70. So it's an interesting concept too because th this is a situation in which Apple is starting at the opposite end of the spectrum that they normally do. Normally, Apple yep. comes out with a consumer-grade product that is not cheap but not out of the range of a normal person. Um, the original AirPods, what, were like $120, right? Yep. Um, anyone can buy those. Anyone can, like literally anyone. I know like financial situations change, but anyone can like save up and get $120 yeah. eventually. It's attainable. Right? Um, the AirPod Pros, I would argue, 
are kind of in that mid tier where it's like almost anyone like, can get those two hundred fifty bucks. They're like one, yeah, they're like one eighty. I know you can find them yeah. sometimes, but like list price is like two fifty. Yeah. And then you have the like professional grade AirPod Pro Max or Air Air, Air Pro Max, whatever. The over are. the ear. Yeah. yeah. Usually that's that is the way that Apple releases things they release mm -hmm. the macbook air or the base macbook and then they show you the consumer grade or the the professional grade model same thing with the new imacs yep. right now we have new imacs that are colorful and great kind of like old apple when we were in yep. school but they're like these are the family computers they're family com consumer grade computers with the apple yep. vision pro either we're looking at consumer grade and it, it's a scary space to be in Oh, if that's consumer, that's ridiculous. Or they started on the opposite end, and maybe they yeah. shouldn't have. They yeah, they definitely shouldn't have. The, I think. I hope that not a lot of people pre-order this, and then it shows Apple like, hey, this might be a little bit pricey. I think they know it's pricey. I I think yeah. that. I think they know that they are Apple, and they can say, hey. We're Apple. We just dropped a new product. Go buy it. I also I, I think they didn't make a lot of them. You know what I mean? Mm -mm. I, th yeah. I think that they they knew it was pricey and they are trying to get into the space, and then they're gonna they're gonna come back hopefully and mm -hmm. create something that's a little bit more um, achievable for folks like you and me, the normal folks. So just definitively, everyday guys. Deaton Street says if you're a normal dude or dudette. It's a no. Don't don't spend your money this way. Go buy a car. <laughs> yeah, you should a probably do that. Car. Put put that money in your savings account <laughs> and you know, or you, you, uh, invest invest it, it in Apple somewhere. For sure, invest it in Apple <laughs> and then make Apple buy <laughs> make you make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you have exactly. thirty five hundred dollars just chilling, <laughs> invest in Apple. Wait like five years and then make them buy you. <laughs> The Apple Vision yeah. Pro. By that time, they'll have the Apple Vision Pro 6. Right. You know, like, cool. It's going to be like your glasses. It's going to be a yep. clip-on. Yep. Done. The Ray-Ban. So uh, it just it, just in closing here, Apple, if you're watching this, mm -hmm. Tim Cook, if you want to send us some, do you hit, hit up hit hey, the we email? Can, um, hey, we could try it out, and you could prove us yeah. wrong. We live in two different states, Absolutely. though, so we need those. Uh, two, two. So and also, if you're uh, one of our new subscribers and you are rich, uh, we'll, we'll send you those. Uh, <laughs> we'll send you the addresses too, or at least a PO yeah, box. Right. We don't, probably don't want you to know. Sure, where, absolutely. Where um, <laughs> closing thoughts, closing closing words before we uh, cut this thing out. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty. I, I think we said it all. You know. In other words, uh, we consumers. did the dang thing. We did do the dang thing. Oh. You're right. All righty, buddy. Well, love, ya. love you. Peace. See you, dude.